we just finished a Zoom call in my membership community, and we were talking about layered pattern fills in Illustrator. So I want to go through the steps and try to make it a little bit more concise. So we're talking about taking a floral pattern like this, for example, and layering it with another pattern. Well, the first thing that we have to do is decide, okay, well, what size is this repeat? And one way to do this is just take the repeat fill swatch, drag it out to the artboard, and then go in with your white arrow, select that no fill, no stroke bounding shape that appears in every pattern fill that you have here in the swatches panel. This is the size of the repeat. And I can see up here on the top control bar that is 10 and a half inches wide by 13 inches high. Okay, so that is the size and that's kind of limiting because I have to, if I'm gonna create a pattern to layer with this pattern, just layering up two fills, they have to be this, a dimension one that divides into the other. And in the case of 10 and a half by 13, I'm limited here to a, um, basically a half an inch, a quarter of an inch, something like that. So maybe what I wanna do instead is just change the dimensions here. And I'm gonna do this in pattern editing mode because it's gonna allow me to sort of move the flowers around and figure out the best arrangement. So first thing I'll do here is I want to make a copy of this pattern here. And I'm not seeing the plus sign. Let me click on a swatch here, get my plus sign back. And then I'm just gonna drag this to the plus sign to make a copy of it. And I'll work on the copy. I'll double click on this. And inside a pattern editing mode, I can see this is a grid repeat. And there it is, 10 and a half by 13 inches. So let's do, let's see if I can make the width here 10 inches and then hit the tab key and you'll see it kind of squeeze up there. And then I'll make the height 12 inches. And then this way I'll be able to create um, a pattern that goes divides into these. It could be a, a one inch pattern or a two inch pattern. It will work for either of these dimensions here. Now everything got kind of squished up here, so I might need to do you know, just a little bit of editing to make this work, um, but it's not, you know, it's not a crazy amount. And, you know, obviously if I was not making a tutorial, I might spend a little bit more time on this. All right, now what I'm seeing here is kind of, you know, dimmed back art, and uh, in order to really evaluate this, I need to change the dim percentage here. I'll make it 100 and then I can sort of zoom out and see how the pattern looks. And I think that looks okay. So I see I had the original dimensions in here. I'm gonna change those to 10 by 12 and, and then I can exit. But before I exit, um, I also just want to mention that I'm working on a grid repeat and so these are the, the width and height dimensions. The steps would be different if you were working on, for example, a brick by column, a half drop repeat. Um, your tile dimensions say that they're 10 by 12, but you do have this extra art out here if you see the little dotted line. This is something that happens between pattern editing mode and the swatches on the artboard. Basically, pattern fill swatches can only repeat as grid repeats. And so pattern editing mode translates into a grid repeat. So you have a lot of extra art out here. In this case, uh, this pattern fill art would be probably 20 inches by 12 inches. So I'm just mentioning that as an aside, you wanna watch out if you're making anything but a grid repeat. I'm going back to the grid repeat here. All right, so now I'm gonna exit out of here and save that. Then I'm gonna make a rectangle and clicking on the artboard, 10 by 12, I already had those dimensions in there. That's the same dimensions of the repeat that we just created. So when you make a rectangle, same dimensions as the repeat fill, and you fill it with that fill, you can sort of do a tiling test here and see that they repeat seamlessly, and that's working. Okay, great. So now let's make the pattern that's gonna go along with this. It could be one inch square or it could be two inches square. Let's go and just go into pattern editing mode, object, pattern, make, and create a new pattern. So here in the width and height, I'm gonna change this to two and two. We're making another grid repeat pattern here, zooming in so I can see that tile. And I'm just gonna make something super quick here, a diagonal, um, and I'll color it yellow, and maybe I'll make it a little bit thicker. 
All right, so now what I have is a two by two uh, diagonal repeat and I can exit out of here and know that it's going to work with this 10 by 12. So let's go into the appearance panel where we can layer up fills. Here we go. I've got the rectangle selected. I can see we've got one fill here and I'm just gonna add two more. All right, so there they are. The bottom one is gonna be a solid color. Let's see, try a light blue, maybe lighten that up a little bit. And then the middle one will be the diagonal, the two inch diagonal that I just created. And let's see if I can make this just a little bit darker. Okay. Now, once again, this is a 10 by 12 rectangle with pattern fills applied to it that have not been scaled. So they're compatible They're the same size repeat as we have in the repeating, you know, in the rectangle here. And when I tile it out, I can see those diagonals, they go all the way through and it's all matching up. It's kind of a packed pattern, but it definitely, I can see that it's working here. So it's repeating. All right, so we have successfully created a layered pattern fill here. And now what we wanna do is export it so that we can maybe use this design at Spoonflower. So what we have here again is a 10 by 12 inch rectangle with our layered pattern fills. This is not expanded art. These are pattern fill swatches stacked up on a rectangle. And I wanna make an artboard that's exactly this size. So with this art selected, I'll go to the object menu down to artboards and fit to selected art. And now that artboard is there. Now I always like to check and make sure that it's absolutely perfectly lined up here and we can look at it, you know, by we can do that by aligning it here. We can also go to the transform panel. We can confirm that the selected rectangle is 10 by 12 inches on this 10 by 12 inch artboard and that the position of it is perfectly up in the upper left corner because we have our reference point to the upper left corner and we can see it's at zero and zero inches of the X and Y. So we know this art is perfectly lined up. We know that this rectangle is the same size as the repeat here. And we know that this diagonal uh, is dividing evenly into this 10 by 12 rectangle. So everything is good so far. Let's go ahead and go up to file and export and then save for web. I like to use save for web because it's very flexible and you can kind of see what you're doing here. So currently this is 10 inches wide. It automatically shows up here because save for web is for 72 PPI art. It's 720 pixels. I want this to be bigger. I want this to have more resolution. And so if I want this to be 10 inches wide for spoon flower, Spoonflower um, asks for a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. So 10 times 150 PPI equals 1500 pixels. So I need to type that in right here to the width 1500. And because the lock icon is turned on, I know that the height will scale accordingly. And then I wanna also make sure that art optimized is turned on here for the anti-aliasing because very often pattern fills will have these little white tiling lines in them and art optimized anti-aliasing usually takes care of that. And so far it's looking good. Now you can use this magnifying glass to zoom in a little bit if you wanna check it even more. And I'm just going to click save and I'm gonna name this floral 1500 and that way um, I'll be able to see this when I open it in Photoshop. So what I like to do is test these exports out in Photoshop. And we can see Floral 1500 PNG. Um, I'm gonna use the View Pattern Preview. And Pattern Preview just tiles this um, file out in a grid repeat or straight repeat, just like it needs to be for this art but I can see that there's lines here. So there's no lines in the interior of the pattern, which I would expect if I hadn't used uh, art optimized anti-aliasing, but I am seeing them at the edge here. So this is another problem that we can have when we're exporting from Illustrator. It's not just those pattern tiling lines inside of the pattern fill, it's also the stuff that happens at the edge of the artboard. So let's take a look at how we can fix that. I'm gonna go back to Illustrator 
the fix for this is to make this artwork bleed over the edge of the artboard. And once it bleeds over the edge of the artboard, you won't see that white line at the edge. So what I need to do is if I just try to make this bigger here, I'm gonna be scaling the pattern and that's not gonna be good because it's not gonna be then compatible with the 10 by 12 inch tile size. So let me undo that. Instead, I want to scale the rectangle without scaling the pattern, and that's a preference. So I need to go into preferences, that's Command or Control K, and right here, there's the preference, Transform Pattern Tiles. I'll uncheck that, and then click OK. And now, you can see when you move the rectangle, the pattern doesn't move. So that's what that preference setting does. Let me undo. Well, all I wanna do is create a little bit of extra bleed around the edge. I'm gonna hold down the Option key or Alt key. That allows me to scale from the center. And then I'm gonna also hold down the Shift key to scale proportionately like that. And it's really only affecting the rectangle now, remember, because of that preference setting. So I'm just changing a little bit making the rectangle go over the edge of the artboard, but the pattern fill itself has not been scaled. Now let's just try that exact same export one more time. So I'll go to File, Export, Save for Web. Again, I know that that width I want is 1500 pixels wide. Okay, and then Save. And this time I'll call this Floral 1500 Bleed. So I can tell it apart from the other one. And now here's the old one in Photoshop. Let me go get the new one and add it in here. Okay, so here it is, Floral 1500 Bleed. And now I wanna turn on Pattern Preview. So I'll go to View, Pattern Preview, click OK, I don't care about that. And look, that line is gone. There are no tiling lines in this pattern. There are no lines at the edge, no soft pixels. So that's before when we see the lines because the art was just aligned to the edge of the artboard. And in this case, we just created bleed and now there's no line. Now that we've tested out the tile in Photoshop, we know that it works. Let's go ahead and upload it to Spoonflower. I'm gonna choose the file here. It's the one that has the bleed it's called Floral and Bleed. And then let's go ahead and click Upload. And we're gonna wait a minute for that. And although it's a little fuzzy and we're kind of zoomed out, it's hard, it would be hard to see a really teeny tiny little line um, in this preview. That means I'm glad you know I checked it out in Photoshop and I made sure that it was perfectly seamless. And if I look over here where we have the dimensions, it's telling me there's a, a 10 inch by 12 inch repeat at 150 pixels per inch. So that's great. When you upload something that's 1500 pixels wide, that's what you get. Once I save this, I can look at it on different products. And I always think this is kind of a nice way of just getting an idea of the scale. I mean, I like to print my designs out first um, so I can hold them in my hand and see what scale they are. But then on a photo, like this, it's kind of a great way of just checking and seeing, okay, do I like the scale of the flowers there? Do I need to make that um, instead of 10 inches wide? Do I need to make it 12 inches wide? In which case, instead of uh, setting the size at 1500, I would, let's see, 12 inches times 150 equals 1800. So instead of a 1500 pixel wide PNG, I would upload an 1800 pixel wide PNG and just see if I like that scaling better. All right, well, I hope you got some helpful tips from that workflow. This is something we just discussed in our Zoom call today on my membership community. You can find more about it on my website, lauracoilcreative.com. We have regular Zoom calls, a community where members can ask questions and help each other and post their work. We're really all about improving our illustrator skills, sometimes bringing in other apps like we just did with Photoshop or Adobe Fresco and developing workflows that work for artists. If you like this video, give me a like and subscribe. My name is Laura Coyle and thank you for watching.